Hey everyone, just got these new PCBs in uh, design from OSH Park. Basically all this is going to do is going to convert a uh, NES mask ROM for either the program or the character. And let me dump it on my programmer. This way if I got a game that doesn't want to load up, even though all the traces check out, I can throw the ROM in the programmer and check the CRC, make sure there's no bit rot on it. So let's go ahead and put these together. Okay, so all right, warmed up. Let's go ahead and put some sockets and some headers on it. Four corners tacked down on the program. Let's go ahead and do the same thing on character. Right now, put a couple zip sockets on them. Okay, got them both ready with the headers and the sockets. Next one I'm going to do is going to unsolder the mask ROMs from Kirby's Adventure because this has got 4 megabit program ROM and 2 and 2 megabit character ROM. Basically the max that an NES game can do, so I'm going to make sure I can dump the largest size chips on both these adapters. Oops. And look at that, it fell right out. <laughs> Alright, so let's take them over to the computer and see if we can read them out. Okay, I had a little problem with the character side of this. Turns out I forgot to ground the pin. So I ran a little jumper wire, and now I can read the character ROMs fine also. So I'm going to go ahead and update that on the PCB layout and get some new prototypes made. Okay, got the new PCBs in. Also did a little bit of re-routing. Re so this one has no Vs on the board. And I also got this one over here, which can be used to dump MMC5 or up to 8 megabit SNES ROMs. Let's go ahead and give them a test. Okay, now I've got the adapters put together. Let's go ahead and try and dump some few mask ROMs. Alright, so let's go ahead and start off with the program ROM for Kirby. So that is a 4 megabit. ROM. So it'll just select a generic 4 megabit EP ROM. You put the chip in the adapter and stick it in the programmer. Go ahead and give it a read. And it's going to come up here saying that a few pins aren't making contact. That's fine. Pin 24 is the output enable, which the NES mask ROMs don't have actually use. And pin 1 is program supply, which is not going to be used on a mask ROM either. So hit ignore, read it out, and save the file. And let's go ahead and read out Ultima Exodus. That's a 2 megabit ROM. Throw that in the programmer. And again, saying a few pins aren't making contact, just ignore that. And now I'm 
I'm going to go ahead and read the Shadowgate Mask ROM, which is only one megabit, which is a 20 or 28 pin package for the NES Mask ROMs. So go ahead and select the one megabit chip. And it's going to complain that a few other ones aren't making contact because it's only 28 instead of 32 pin. And now let's try to dump some character ROMs. Let's go ahead and start out with the Kirby ROM. That's 2 megabit. Put that in the programmer. And set 2 megabit for the device. And again, a few pins that aren't actually used on the original ROM are going to be making no contact. I'll read the Shadowgate Mask ROM. That's a 1 megabit character ROM also. Okay, so we got them all red. Let's go ahead and check out the CRCs. I forget the name of the program that adds this in there. I'll double check that. Maybe put a link in the video description. All right, so let's go ahead and check out Kirby. So come over here to Boot God Database and look up Kirby. Good thing about boot guys, it has the CRC values listed right over here. So we can check the program and the character ROM values. And they both look good. So we know that both of those dump successfully. Let's go ahead and check the other ones. We're Shadowgate. Once again, we can check the CRC on the program side and the character side. And as you can see, they both match up. Now we'll look up Ultima Exus. Ultima is an SN ROM game, so that means that it doesn't have a character ROM. It has a character RAM instead, so you only need to check the program value. So come over here to the Ultima dump that we made. See the hash files. And there we go, that one matches up also. And in case you actually wanted to just run these on an emulator, you could pull off the header file from an NES ROM. Let's just go ahead and do that with Kirby. Open up a hex editor. That will save the care or we're saved the header file from the ROM. That's the first 16 bytes. Now we'll stitch all the files together. 
Go ahead and hold shift and then right click on empty spot, open command window. Do copy, set the binary flag. Kirby header plus Kirby program plus Kirby character RAM or character ROM. Then the output file, just call it kirby.ness. Then there's a new file, let's go ahead and load that up. Okay, let's go ahead and give the MMC5 chips a try. So I got Romance of the Three Kingdoms 2 in here, and we got it set up as a 2 megabit ROM, because that's the size of it. Let's go ahead and give it a read, and see what we get. Again, another pin that's not used, so we'll just hit ignore. Swap out the program for the character. Let's give that a read. And there you go, checking the CRCs against the Bootguy database, everything is fine. Alright, now let's go ahead and try and read some SNES mask ROMs. I got Madden 95 and Super Play Action Football. So I'll throw Madden 95 in there, and let's see if this one works. Good thing about the SNES ROMs is there's no copy or header needed. You can just launch them straight from SNES 9X. So I'm just going to change this to an 8 megabit ROM and give that a read. And one of them's not making contact. This actually is a problem because pin 5 is actually used. There we go. And there you go, CRC is good on SNES 9X, so I know it was dumped properly. Let's go ahead and try Super Play Action Football next. And there we go. Once again, everything checks out. So there you go. You can dump your own ROMs. And then this way, if you're trying to fix up a game, you can check and see if there's any bit rot on your ROMs before you go and start messing around looking for broken traces or anything like that.